turn up your radio, it's time for DeLorean Talk with your host, Dave Tavers. Hi, and welcome to another episode of DeLorean Talk. Thanks, as always, for listening. This is Dave Tavers. I really do appreciate everybody's great emails and sincere interest in this project. I really enjoy doing it and looking forward to talking to more people. Be sure to check out DeLorean Talk and DeLoreanDirectory.com. Uh, check out the DeLorean Census. See if your VIN is listed on there. And if it's not, be sure to add the information. Send me some photos and we'll include it on the website. And spread the word as you talk to other DeLorean owners. Make sure that other people have heard the show. And if you have things that you want me to ask or things you want me to talk about, send them in. I'm especially interested in talking to club presidents around the world who want to talk about their DeLorean club and things that they're doing to make the club better or make it work. And hopefully some other people will get some ideas from those as well. Today's show is uh, somebody that I met at DCS 2018. It was the very first people that I was going to do a quote unquote man on the street interview with. And it turned out that I got totally distracted because DCS is awesome. And I didn't do any other interviews with anybody. So even though I carried around the mic and the recorder for a long time, I didn't use it. <laughs> but uh, luckily I ran into today's guest, Ryan Foster, and his dad at DCS. Got to know him, ended up spending some time chatting over DCS, and we've been we've kept in touch since the show. So I said, hey, it's time to get you on the show so that I can use you for something else. And with that, I'll say, hey, Ryan Foster, thanks so much for joining me. Hey, Dave, thanks for having me on. I, like I said, met you at DCS. You had said that you had listened to the show and really liked it, and I've heard that from a lot of people. Actually, DCS was pretty awesome because the number of people that came up and they're like, hey, you're the DeLorean talk guy, right? It's like, yeah, <laughs> just people from around the country. It was pretty cool. And uh, getting to talk to you and your dad, you're not a new owner, but you're a another, a recently new owner because you had a car back in the 90s? Uh, or 2001, yeah. For a short period of time. Short period of time. Yeah. And and then uh, decided to uh, be smart because you couldn't afford it, got rid of it, and then and then you just picked up another car uh, this last year. Yes, um, March of this year. Yep. Awesome. What is your background? What What have you done uh, in the past? Tell people about yourself. <laughs> uh, well, I've had a few different jobs over the years, but um, most more recently was the uh, I was a Harley Davidson technician for quite a few years, um, about seven years or so, working at a local Harley shop, uh, doing repairs and, and all that. But I've always been into cars. I was in, grew up in the air-cooled Volkswagens, um, you know, when I was a teenager and um, just cars in general, uh, I think are, are great. Jerry, um, you've been a car so, now. And I know that yeah. you live in North Carolina, but are you from North Correct. Carolina? Yeah. No, uh, originally from the northeast Pennsylvania, upstate New York area. Um, I grew up in, in northeast Pennsylvania um, in Susquehanna County and uh, just over the border from New York, uh, Binghamton, New York area. So to find it on the map, I'll just say I'm from Binghamton, New York, because you'll never <laughs> find the town I actually grew up in. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, we have Google Maps now, so <laughs> it makes it a little easier. <laughs> right. That was one of the things I found interesting is that you had been a Harley mechanic for a long time, and you right. you and your dad, or growing up, your dad kind of got you hooked on v, on VWs and car stuff. So you've got a great yeah. knowledge of cars and mechanics. So mm -hmm. coming back to the DeLorean, you, you're you pretty far ahead of a lot of people already. I don't know if I'd say I'm far ahead. I mean, as far as turning a wrench – yeah, I mean, I know, I know a few things, but the DeLorean I have found is is its own entity in itself because there has some, you know, quirky things that are DeLorean specific that I've never seen on any other car, <laughs> you know. Uh, so it, it's there's still a learning curve, even if you are familiar with turning wrenches on other cars. It's there's still a lot to learn. Sure, but that's true with any car. I mean, it, whether mm -hmm. it's a '57 Chevy or a Harley, not every Harley is the same. Not every Every four door car is the same, so right. So you bought your car in March, and what is yeah. your VIN number or the last five year VIN number? 
Last five of the VIN is zero six 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 eight. Don't let that scare you. It's been a very good car. <laughs> you drove your car to DCS. I sure did. Yeah. And yeah. how far was that drive? Um, well, I think it was about eight hundred miles off the top of my head uh, from the uh, Burlington, North Carolina area is where we drove up from, and uh, it was a fourteen-hour drive. If I if I remember the with the time difference and everything, it was about fourteen hours. Fourteen hours worth of car. driving. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it was you and your dad. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So I hint, hinted at it earlier. You had a car then in two thousand one for a short amount of time. Do you want to tell did, that story? Yeah. Sure. So I have loved the DeLorean for as far back as I can remember. Um, and I had a show car that my dad and I had built. And um, I got to the point where I just didn't want to drive it because I was afraid something was going to happen to it. So I decided to sell it. And I regretfully sold that. Um, but I used that money to purchase a DeLorean because I'd been eyeballing them for a while. And, and I said, this is something to do this. Uh, I was 21 years old, and I searched and searched, and I actually found that car out of North Carolina. It was out of Charlotte, North Carolina, and it was VIN 16301. It was an 83, or, well, the title said 83, um, and um, got that vehicle home, and I put it on the road and drove it, and I only owned it for about six months till I had to do something I could not afford to keep it on the road due to insurance purposes and my age. Yeah, 21 uh, and and yeah. maintenance and, <laughs> and insurance, sure. Oh, yeah. Maintenance, I mean, the car ran and drove beautifully. I mean, it was it was a really nice car, very clean, hmm. um, but it just, the insurance is what killed me. And, I, you know, living in upstate New York, I, I was thinking I was going to drive it all year round, but realistically I didn't <laughs> want to drive it in the wintertime because the salt would have just, destroyed the frame probably one one winter and i would have been <laughs> right. kicking myself yeah yeah so you ended up getting rid of the car and kicking yourself ever since yes i got rid of the car and i was upset about it like because it's like i had you know you have that this is it and it was just like a, a tease in a way like oh, here you go gotta take it away and so i thought about it you know life goes on and you know, I've got into motorcycles and I've had a few motorcycles and a couple other different kinds of cars, nothing spectacular or anything like that. But uh, probably the end of last year, November, December time frame or so, I just started getting the itch again because I kept going, man, I, the DeLorean, that was the one that it's the one that got away, you know, and, and I, I still would love to have another one. And uh, so I started researching again and, and looking into it because it'd been what 18 17 18 years since my last one yeah and the market's changed quite a bit in those years uh the the cars now might have some more miles on them than they did back then and you know what's available and i was quite surprised <laughs> actually um, a car that i paid fifteen thousand dollars for back then with twenty thousand miles on it would have been about a fifty or sixty thousand dollar car today uh, i couldn't believe the price difference you know if i was comparing apples to apples the, the quality of the car um, and the exactly the yeah i mean because that car was a very clean car from what i knew again i i was still real green with those back then and i've learned quite a bit in the months that i've owned this car and in the few months prior to like what to look for and you know looking at frames in the in the, the roof box and just little things that i never would have thought of look at before yeah so well at 21 no matter how much you know, you're probably not quite that in tune. And at 21, in 2001, did you know any other DeLorean owners? Did you get involved with any local clubs or groups back then? I sure did not. I didn't know any other local owners at the time that I had mine. The club scene, honestly, I, for us, it, the internet was still real new where I was at. So trying to find stuff like that online never really even thought of yeah but uh you know try even trying to find parts i was uh, i was remembering i found i still have a bunch of receipts and stuff from that car and, and i found that i'd done a lot of parts buying from pj grady because that they were in new york and i was in new york so right. it's close yeah but i had heard and i don't remember if i bought anything from delorean motor company or not back then i don't i don't really remember but you know just 
trying to figure out parts and, and what, what was available. That was interesting, you know, so it was, it was a different time, you know, today you go online and, oh, you got this place and this place and you can find all the stuff pretty quick. I do remember the, what was the old forums that they used to have? The DeLorean, DeLorean mailing list. Yeah. DML, um, DML, DeLorean yep, mailing yeah. list. Yep. I was on that for a while uh, when I had my car and that was a, a pretty good wealth of knowledge back <laughs> then. I have found my th- a bunch of those old mailing lists. If you go to Google, you yeah. can search for it, and somewhere it got archived, so you can find some of those old threads on there. Because I found stuff oh, wow. from me from like ninety four, ninety five, ninety six, posting on the DML uh, just through Google, and it's hysterical to see what I wrote at nineteen, twenty, twenty one years old, whatever that was. Thinking, oh, I'm embarrassed. I shouldn't even be telling anybody that, but. Uh, it, I look back and say, what a moron I was. I'm talking about, oh, wouldn't it be easy to raise the molds to make new body panels? And I didn't know anything what I was talking about because I've only owned my car for a couple of years now. And this is back in the right. early 90s. It's fun to think back on the early days of DeLoreans and the Internet. It's definitely changed a lot. You know, technology is, you know, I guess it brought everybody a little bit closer together. Growing up where I grew up, there was a uh, import car shop. And my dad came home. I was maybe 12, 13 years old, 10, somewhere in there. I don't know. And he's like, I got to show you something. And I was like, okay. So we drove up uptown to this local car place, and they had a DeLorean sitting on their lot. And I was like, no way. I was freaking out. I was like, <laughs> let's buy it. And he's like, no, we're not buying a car. But, you know, he wanted to show it to me because he knew I loved the cars. And um, I, I took a picture of it and, you know, just oogled all over the car. And every time we'd go up that way, up to town, I'd be like, can we go by the, the dealership? And, and we'd drive by just so I could see it sitting in the, in the dealership lot. <laughs> and then finally they sold the car, and my dad's like, ah, it's gone. We don't have to drive by there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it was just like, because you don't see them. I mean, even yeah. back then, you didn't see them every everywhere. Well, and especially not in the Northeast. You know, a lot of the cars were sold on the West Coast, and the ones that did go back East – there just wasn't as many. Right. And I mean, even today, I don't see very many, you know, on the road, which I find kind of funny. I mean, I, maybe it's more collectors are keeping them in their garage. They don't want them. They don't want them out and about. I don't know. But I mean, where I live now, um, which is in the Burlington, North Carolina area, I, I don't know of any other owners right here in this area. Probably the closest one I've heard of was about an hour away. So, so. may hopefully somebody will hear this episode and then spread the word. What city are you actually, what city do you live in? Mebane, North Carolina. Mebane, North Carolina, which is near Burlington. So yep. if there's anybody out there that that knows other owners in, in uh, Ryan's area, get in touch. You're on social media, you're around, you're in, you know, different uh, Facebook groups and message boards. So yeah. yeah, you know, maybe you'll, maybe somebody will track you down and say, Hey, I've got a DeLorean as well. And, I do know I don't know anybody either. So, yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> I have a garage. We'll work. <laughs> yeah, well, a garage and probably good tools, and you know what you're doing because you've already done a bunch of work to your car, just having it less than a year, and you've already turned wrench on it a lot, right? Yes, I have. I've done a lot because I want to make sure the car is reliable as can be, and you know, I, I can just turnkey drive and i don't have to worry about anything it's i want to be able to drive the car as worry-free as possible yeah so yeah i've i've gone through done a lot of work on the suspension fuel system engine um radiator some interior work uh radiator had been replaced before i bought it it's not the original plastic tank radiator nice is it all copper or is just a new it's just a non-plastic ends it's just non-plastic ends i don't think it's an all copper one got it um, but it is all, it does have metal tanks, but I've replaced the steering rack and I've replaced all the shocks uh, in the, in the springs. Uh, when I bought the car, uh, the driver's side front shock was blown. Uh, it was leaking fluid and <laughs> it just bounced everywhere. It was quite an interesting trip back from Arizona cause I did drive the car home from Arizona. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Arizona to North Carolina. 
Yeah, I mean, it was a fun trip. Don't get me wrong. I, I had a blast uh, driving the car back, and um, you know, and it's a, a big, you know, gamble you got to take flying out to Arizona to drive a car two thousand miles home, <laughs> and not knowing anything about the car. But yeah, you know, the guy took really all in all took really good care of the car. He would owned it since nineteen ninety, and um, wow, you know, so I'm the third third owner of the vehicle, and um, I'm, I'm happy I got it. It's it's been a very very good car. Awesome. Did you find it on Craigslist, eBay, Facebook? I found it on eBay. I was sifting through ads. I was checking uh, Auto Trader Classic, eBay, and I checked Craigslist, but there's not. It doesn't seem to be a lot on Craigslist for for uh, DeLoreans. Oh, maybe out there. I man, yeah. I I see way more DeLoreans on Craigslist than I do on eBay. There's oh, wow. a there's a lot at least here in West Coast. Uh, there, I'm okay. surprised how many, and I'm, I look at the whole country. There's a fair number, sure. but uh, more so, more so Craigslist and DeLorean. So that's interesting because that was only this year. So you're still, while you're kind of an old owner, you're still in the new world. Uh, and that's where you found it was, was from eBay. Cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I consider myself still a new owner cause I haven't, you know, I haven't had one for, for very long. You know, it's, it's still been under a year really. The old car that I had uh, years ago, that was just a, you know, a, a test version to see if I could do it, I guess. I <laughs> At DCS or any of the other people you've connected with, have you found anyone else that's that has a similar story where they bought one, sold it, and then years later bought one again? I have not. I'm sure that story's out there, but no, I haven't actually talked with anybody that, that had one and, and gone through everything like I have with buying another one years later. I've talked to a few people that bought them and drove them across country after they bought them, but that's yeah. Uh, I am surprised. I've talked to a number of people as well. I, I guess I just don't have the guts to do that. I've talked to a number of people who buy a DeLorean uh, sight unseen. I'll say, you know, mm-hmm. pictures are one thing, but getting up and close, up close and personal to the car and flying hundreds, thousands of miles and then driving the car back across the country. Maybe I and my car has been great. I have not had any yeah. any issues, but I guess I, I just don't have that trust. It could also be I am a very spoiled California guy that I'm not used to driving giant open expanses. I, I've been back east a couple of times, whether it was just for DCS in in Chicago area or when I've been to Missouri. You just get on the road and and there is nothing as far as you can see. And, you know, you drive mm-hmm. like that for 30 minutes and then, oh, look, there's a gas station. So I just always imagine breaking down in the middle of there. And there's no – there's not AAA that's 10 minutes away. At least right. I, I assume that. No offense to people in the Midwest. That was just – that's been my experience is there's a lot of distance in between uh, places. In, in California, we don't have that. So it kind of freaks me out driving too far away. Driving to Vegas is three and a half hours and it's mm-hmm. – it used to be worse, but there's still stretches where you drive for 20, 30 minutes and there's nothing. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah out in the desert. <laughs> yeah. Normally, I ask people what the longest distance they've driven, but it's got to either Arizona to North Carolina or North Carolina, or North Carolina to Chicago. I don't remember. Yeah. 14 hours you um, said to Chicago. I don't know what how long it took you to drive from Arizona. Um, well, I made some stops on the way back. We, we stopped at the, um, cause a friend of mine flew out and rode back with me in the car. And on the way back, I stopped at the, uh, the UFO museum in Roswell, got a nice photo op of the DeLorean out in front of the museum. Cause I just thought that was pretty funny. Nice. And then stopped at oh, champion Harley Davidson while we were there, which was kind of an interesting stop because they all come out and wanted to take photos of the DeLorean <laughs> and they said, this is the coolest car that's ever pulled up in our parking lot, <clears throat> which is in Roswell as well. Wow. And then, um, we made a stop at, uh, DeLorean motor company in Houston. Cause I figured we're, we'll kind of detour and stop there. I, you know, I'd never been to their facility and I thought, well, we're going to be almost there. I want to stop and see it. Yeah. Cause you this will be pretty neat. Right. Um, and it's very impressive, you know, all the parts that they have there and, and uh, just it blows your mind to go, wow, this is these are all original parts. It's cool. Yeah. And then uh, we made a detour down to New Orleans. I've never been to New Orleans. So we stopped there and uh, had some cuisine and and uh, walked around the French Quarter a little bit and, and then uh, hopped in the car and beat feet back to 
to Burlington, North Carolina. So it took about, I want to say it was about five days, if I remember correctly, That's from fun. the time we started from uh, Phoenix back. It was about a five day total trip. How fun! Uh, that's a serious road trip in a DeLorean, and the whole time you're driving the DeLorean, it's not like you're towing it and then taking a your the pickup truck driving around. You're stopping at all the places with the DeLorean. Oh yeah, yeah. And we got. I actually had somebody in, somewhere in Arizona. Uh, we just left Phoenix, and and I honestly I couldn't tell you what road we were taking. It was I didn't want to take highways. I wanted to take secondary roads because they're more fun to me. Yeah. And so we're just cruising along and this the guy behind us and he's following us. And I know he's following us. Cause I'm like, every place I <laughs> moved to, he'd move to. And I'm like, okay, all right, what's going to happen here? <laughs> and we finally stopped somewhere uh, to stretch our legs. I wanted to check the car over a little bit. Cause I'd still had only had it for a few hours. And right. I wanted to make sure everything was still good, you know? Yeah. And this guy pulls, I mean, I'm pulling through the parking lot trying to lose the guy and he just continued right on my butt and i'm like okay i'm like just get ready because i don't know what's going to happen here and we pull up and he pulls up next to us he goes wow this is so great to see one of these and he goes i remember when they were new i took one for a test drive i was like oh cool so we, he went we talked for about 40 minutes in the parking lot and i'm like oh, you're right, a- man well, i don't mean to be rude but I, I got a long way to go <laughs> you you so yeah you'd own the car for a few hours and that was your first uh, experience yeah. with, with, uh, that's awesome. That is yeah, awesome. It was, <laughs> it was pretty funny. He was a nice, the nicest guy. And it was just, you know, he was just neat to reminisce, you know, he was like, man, I remember when these things were brand new on the lot. And I was like, I wish I could see that day. I mean, yeah. I would have been, um, you know, two years old when they were right. brand new on the lot, but that would have been neat to, to go back and see those. Yeah, man. That's a, oh. that is a fantastic, like first, first encounter. <laughs> Uh, within a couple of hours oh, yeah. of driving the car away. Do you remember, <laughs> did you have anything like that back when you owned the first car in, in 2001? You, you know, in six months, I don't know how, how often you re- you drove it or did you have many people it, talk to you? It was my everyday driver back then. That was the only car I actually owned at the time. So I drove that thing everywhere. But no, I never had, you know, I never had the experiences then that I do now. Um, at least none that I can remember, but you know, like I've heard other people say, you go to a gas station and you know, a five minute gas stop will take you 30 minutes because right. everybody wants to take pictures and yeah. which I'm like, Hey, I'll put the doors up. I'll, you know, whatever you want to do, <laughs> give me just a minute to get my gas. And you know, they'll ask me questions and you know, I've had people ask me if it's a kit car and is it aluminum <laughs> and you know, all this stuff. And you know, and I'll, I'll answer as many questions as I possibly can, you know, yeah. and I'll let them take all the pictures and, you know, and the great thing is, is everybody so far that I've met that something like that has been so nice. And they always like, can I take a picture? I'm like, of course you can take a picture, you know, go for it. I just find that to be such a weird question because uh, you're right. I, that is honestly, that's probably the, the second or third most popular question. Can I take a picture of your car? <laughs> and I don't know why I find that just so weird. I Maybe I would do the same thing. I don't think I've ever taken a picture of somebody's car, but uh, – I don't know. I guess if the person is standing there, that's why they do it. Because you're right. Even it just happened last night. We had our monthly dinner with the D's uh, DeLorean yeah. meetup for the Orange County DeLorean Club, and we had four okay. DeLoreans in the parking lot. And you can see people taking all kinds of pictures, uh, sure. but we weren't sitting right next to the cars. So that must be it. Is that people? It's great that people are polite, but that must be what's going mm-hmm. on. Is that they they're actually they're asking, "Can I take a picture of the car?" But you're kind of in the way. Uh, so is it okay yeah, if I get, get a picture, picture of you <laughs> or, or that they want to make sure that it's okay that if they get a picture of me in the car, you know, us in the car. So, right. I always get out of the way. I said, you know, so do I. You know, I don't want to break your camera. Just get a picture of the car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm always so. doing that too. Cause the, the picture looks better without people in it. Oh yeah. Yeah. And like a lot of times I'll have just the driver door open cause I'm getting gas or whatever. And, yeah. and they're taking pictures. So hold on just a second. And I'll open the passenger doors. Like it looks so much more, uniform when you got both doors open you know yeah so well that so that brings up a question do you think you're going to install toby's uh remote door poppers i already have oh you do okay well yeah, that's yeah, even that was... that's even more fun when you when you're somebody's going to take a picture and you just pop the door remotely right so quick story behind that um i, I saw those on his website oh, man that'd be a great upgrade one day i said but it's not a necessity right now, and, you know. And I was having an issue with the door locks when I first bought them. Uh, when I first bought the car, I noticed that the passenger side door wouldn't always unlock. 
Um, and it was, it was a random thing. I couldn't get a common denominator of why it was happening that way. I ended up getting some technical advice from one of the vendors and did some diagnostic work and found out that I actually had a bad solenoid and it ended up being the solenoid in the driver's side that was bad causing the passenger side to malfunction. Um, I won't get, I won't get into all that, but anyways, well, it's pow- so, their power uh, locks. The idea is that when you're supposed to be able to cl- lock one, it locks both. Correct. Well, you also have the door lock module, and I've read how they can overheat and cause problems, you know, because they're like an analog system and use the coils and everything. Yeah. So I started doing some research, and then I discovered that Toby at Northwest has the actuators. And, and I so I do some research. I always research everything before I, I – invest in anything because i want to see if this is worth it or not but i've read a lot of good things about the actuators i've I've read you know opinions on both ways and i and i get that everybody has an opinion but i thought well this is more of a modern upgrade and i want the thing to be re- reliable i don't want to get locked in the car yeah so i uh, i ordered the actuators from him actually before i did that i i ended up buying the digital door lock module because i thought that that was actually my problem before i realized it was a solenoid um and the, the great thing about that module is it actually has a readout on it that if you have a door lock problem it will tell you what's going on with your doors and helps you diagnose problems with the doors which is pretty cool uh so anyways I ended up getting the actuators from toby and i said what the heck i'll get the the wings aloft system of the door poppers and i'm going to be in there i don't want to keep pulling the door panels on and off so i did all <laughs> yeah. at the same time and wow, I tell you what, that is the coolest thing to do. I mean, I've <laughs> popped the door open and people are just like, wait, how did you do that? And it's like <laughs> magic, you know, <laughs> uh, they just, they think it's cool. But now I get everybody to go, can you close them with that? I'm like, no, nah, <laughs> I definitely want to get those at some point. And now luckily, mm-hmm. at least here in, in Orange County, California, because yeah. you're also, you also are in Orange County, North Carolina, right? Or you used to be. I used to work in Orange County, North Carolina, yeah, yeah. which is the county next to where I live. <laughs> so here in Orange <laughs> County, California, luckily there's another owner who he installed his set, and then he's recently helped somebody else, and now there's a third owner that wants to install it, and he's like, oh, man, I, you know, I can help with that because he's becoming the local expert on, on installing uh, the you know, Toby's Wings Aloft stuff. So at That's some great. point now – because that was one of my things is, is I want to get some hands-on time. And now yeah. that Richard has done it several times, like, oh, you know, one of these days I'll save the money up and, and order that from Toby. Cool. Uh, it's definitely worth it. Um, the couple of advantages, you know, small advantages I've, I've found from it is you're not always grabbing the door handle and, um, you know, risk getting more fingerprints on the door, you know, <laughs> if you're trying to keep the car clean. And then, of course, you can get the, uh, the lock and unlock kit, too, which saves you from having to put the key yeah. in there in the lock cylinder and, you know, scratch the door or something like that, which is, you know, just a nice perk. It's kind of a modernization to a, yeah. a car that makes it a little bit more user-friendly. My power door locks have never worked since I had the car. So I okay. have to lock and unlock both doors. If I'm with somebody else, I have to go unlock their door first. And I tell you, man, it flashes me back to being a kid when there were no mm-hmm. remote, you know, remote door unlock <laughs> and, uh, oh, yeah. It it takes a little bit longer. It's kind of fun, but at the same time, I'm like, yeah, it'd be nice to just uh, remote lock and unlock the door. So one of these days I will. I actually just recently installed his trunk popper kit. Um, nice. Which I think that's kind of neat because, you know, if you've got to open the trunk and you don't want to have – and your doors are closed, you don't have to open the door yeah. and reach in, yep. you know, get the, get the trunk open. Uh, the, yep. Just, you know – Again, that's a modernization that now every new car, yeah. you can open the trunk without opening the doors. And you you forget yeah. that – you actually forget that that's a thing now because when was the last time right. you opened your door to open your trunk? Uh, not on the DeLorean. You know, on normal cars, all modern cars have that. Right. Exactly. You've had the car yeah. since March. You've done a couple yep. of long road trips with it. You've you've put some you put more miles on than a lot of people have. What's your favorite thing so far about owning and driving the car? Um, my favorite thing that so far would have to be uh, the kids' reactions. I've actually had 
I was taking the car up to the post office one day because I try to drive as often as I can. You know, even if it's a short jaunt up the street, it's like, ah, taking the door in. <laughs> I leave the everyday driver in the garage, and, I, and I'll take the door in out. So I had to go to the post office one one day, and um, I drove up. I was getting out of my car, and this SUV comes wheeling in next to me, and a window gets rolled down, and this woman leans over. She goes, oh, my God, is that a DeLorean? <laughs> I said, yeah. And she's like, I've never seen one. And her son's in the back seat, and he's, like, freaking out. This is the coolest thing. It's back to the future. And I was like, yeah. And so they get out of the car, and they're just looking at it. And I'm like, well, you can look all you want, but do you want to sit in it? And the kid's <laughs> like, what? And I'm like, yeah. So he get, he hops right in the driver's seat, and he's smiling, from grinning from ear to ear. Mom's taking all these pictures, and I uh, looked at mom, and she's like, that's so cool. I said, Mom, do you want to sit in it? And she's like, no, that's okay. I'm like, no, go ahead. She's like, really? So she hands me her phone. I'm taking pictures for her. And she's, for she's like, this is the coolest thing. They were freaking out. I like seeing that kind of reaction. I yeah. think it's so much fun because when I was a kid, I know I saw a couple of DeLoreans, but I never had that kind of experience. They were the couple that I saw were closed up and you know the owner's like yeah that's my car like the one there was one in town that the guy just let it sit in his driveway and disintegrate uh, i remember going up yeah it was just disintegrating in a driveway and i just thought man what are you gonna do with this thing you know (laughs) nothing against any other car but isn't isn't it funny that and you're more you're i'm not a car guy i'm a delorean guy you're a car guy (laughs) all the car shows you've been to all the cars you've worked on all the friends that have had nice fancy cars have you ever had anybody, you know, that would even want to sit in? And I always, I always go back to '57 Chevy because it's a beautiful, old, common, popular car. But I don't care what mm-hmm. it is—a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, a, a whatever. How often do you hear people like, "Hey, can I get a picture in your car?" You just, you just never hear that for for right. cars other well, than DeLoreans. In most, you know, the growing up and going to car shows my my, my whole life. <sighs> Usually it's like you don't touch a cut another person's vehicle or motorcycle or car. You don't touch it. You know, you just look, you look with your eyes and I would never have thought to ask somebody to sit in the car, you know, but I guess a GTO or a, a 57 Chevy or a Trans Am, something like that. You see those more often than you see a DeLorean. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and, you know, those are all cool cars, but the DeLorean has a couple things that normal cars don't have. And I think that's what makes them even that more unique and people get more excited about them. You know, I mean, how many cars do you see with gullwing doors yeah. that are stainless steel? I've had so many people go, so is this the original paint? And I go, yep, it is. You know, it's, and I said, but you know, this is stainless steel. And they're like, really? And I was like, yeah, let's go ahead touch it. It's stainless steel. Just like, you know, your kitchen sink. I hate to use that analogy, but, yeah. It's, it's a, it it's is the same, same stuff. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. 304, and, uh, I th- I th- isn't that what yep. they use? 304 and ki- is kitchen sinks as well? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. The 304 has uh, less carbon in it, so it won't rust. There's actually like a 400-grade stainless that will rust um, because there's more carbon in it. Oh. So. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm so happy that, that you, and I think most of – I say us, the the next generation of owners, we like sharing the car, and I'm and oh, nothing wow. at all against anybody that they don't want people touching or looking or breathing on their car. There's nothing there's nothing wrong with that either. But I'm I'm glad that you're one of the people that enjoy sharing with other people with the public. Isn't that funny? I I say public like I'm we're not celebrities, but the car is a celebrity. So sharing with the public is probably a, a good analogy. Right. Right. You know, it's, it's, um, you know, I, and of course I'm also, you know, want somebody to respect the car. I don't want them to be like sure. damaging it, you know, cause that would be bad. I, you know, <laughs> that would upset anybody. Yeah. Um, but you know, if people are wanting to get in it and take it, you know, picture and sit in it, I mean, that to me is wonderful. Go ahead. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, and it's great. Like I said, I love seeing people smile and, and um, when they get a kick out of it, cause you know, that's something that they're going to remember. Like, you know, wow, I got to sit in a DeLorean or, you know, I've given, I actually, a friend of mine, um, her son is, um, just watched Back to the Future for the first time. And they thought this movie was awesome. He's like, uh, I think he's 10. And, um, so I, you know, she knows that I have a DeLorean. And so they came over, I had, I did some work on her car for, and the DeLorean was in the garage and he's like, 
oh my god that's like from back to the future and i said yeah <laughs> and he's looking at it all over and he's sitting in it and he's i said let's go for a ride he goes what and so he, <laughs> he was real calm he sat in the passenger seat i took him for a ride you know up the road a little bit and back and and she told me later she goes oh my god all he did was talk about that car the whole <laughs> way home and how amazing it was and i was like cool because i couldn't tell he was so just like calm just sitting there and i was like what do you think he's like that's cool it's cool and I, I was like all right and i guess he just kept it all inside till he was at home and he just burst was like that was so awesome <laughs> i was like awesome that's great so well, at DCS, I also got to meet your dad. You and your dad came to DCS. Your dad's yeah, awesome as well. Father's son trip. Yep. Father's son trip. <laughs> I, I generally know what your dad thinks about it. What about the rest of your family? You have siblings or uh, you know other people in the family or close close friends. Anybody have opinions about the car that you shouldn't have bought it, or are they just as excited <laughs> as you? Um, well, I uh, I'm the one and only. That I have no siblings, and um, so. Um, my mom, she thought I should have waited to, you know, she's like, I think you should wait, you know, to buy a car. And I'm like, yeah, well, I know what you think, but I just did what I want to do anyways, you know? <laughs> so I, we should always listen to our parents. I know. Right. But at, at certain age, you gotta, you just gotta do it. And I yeah. said, I don't want to get too old to enjoy the car. You know, you know, you don't know what the future is going to bring. Um, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I should add sound so, effects when people make quotes or, lines from back to the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, I, I want to enjoy it while I can, you yeah. know, that that's my thing. And so, you know, I, I went out and I, and I bought the car and, and I mean, the, now, you know, my mom thinks it's cool and everything, but, uh, um, but yeah, I mean, the folks that I work with get a kick out of it and, um, and all that, but no, nobody's ever told me I shouldn't, you know, really own one or, anything like that but there sure. i was telling somebody the other day i said yeah i was at home working on the delorean and he stopped me he goes that is too funny i go what do you mean he goes how often do you hear somebody yeah i was at home working on my delorean <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah that's not a common phrase people say <laughs> so you so. at the beginning of the call you talked yeah. about a bunch of stuff that you've done uh sure what's the biggest the biggest change or or repair that you've made to the car so far it sounds like the springs are that's a pretty big deal. Taking the replacing the springs and the shocks, you know, that's not that's not um, something you just do in, you know, twenty minutes. No, that definitely took me all of two days because I one, I'd never done one on the done that job on that car before. And two, getting the right spring compressor I found was the most important thing for that job because there are a few different kinds of spring compressors available out there. And the clamshell style was what I ended up finding was worked the best and the safest mm -hmm. for that job. But yeah, it's it's a pretty big undertaking. Um, it's not something that you want to say oh, I need to get this done in an hour or anything like <laughs> yeah. that. It's, it's, <laughs> but I've rebuilt almost the whole front suspension because I found worn out parts. You know, I, I ended up boxing in my lower control arms while I had them off. I, I cleaned them all up. We boxed them in, and I put new ball joints in there. Tell people like me who are not car nuts sure. what it means to box in. Well, if you look at your lower control arm, if you were to climb under your car or jack it up and, and look at the bottom of a stock lower control arm, it's more or less a U-shaped. Uh, it's a stamped piece of sheet metal. And from everything I've read, it's kind of a weak point in the front suspension because especially down near where the ball joint is, between the ball joint and where the, the, the spring coil plate is, there's uh it's just a piece of sheet metal and if you hit something wrong or if it starts to get rusty and it's gotten weak what will happen is um there's it can the metal can tear and then your lower control arm is now no good so to box it in would be to take a plate and weld it in so it basically takes that u and turns it into a square if you will mm -hmm. so it protects it's hollow. it strengthens it and keeps keeps the the, yep. the under the weather and the water and the the environment from hitting it directly well yeah i mean you you still have you got to have a hole in there for the shock to go up through but it's it strengthens it a lot because now you've taken something that's just a u-shaped and you've you've connected those two ends of the u basically with a piece of plate and now it's it's more rigid and you're going to have a lot less flex in that metal at that point because you've boxed it in sure so it's it, it's a good upgrade you know 
they you can buy them already done, but I, I just didn't want to spend that kind of money right off the bat since my control arms were good. What kind of metal is it? Something simple that you put on there? You weld it on? So my dad, my dad does a lot of fabrication. Uh, he builds trailers and and all kinds of stuff, and he's I gotta say he's amazing um, with the stuff that he builds. And I I said, this is what I want to do. I found a picture of one that was boxed in online, and I showed him a picture of mine. He goes, oh, that's easy. So okay. Mm -hmm. So I I took him off, and I brought him over to him because he's got more time to do that stuff than I do. So I left him with him for a couple days, and he used 304-grade stainless steel in the same uh, 14-gauge steel Mm -hmm. because, if I remember correctly, we we gauged the control arms are 14-gauge steel. He had 14-gauge stainless, and he cut out a plate and welded it all on there for me said hey they're ready to go wow so it's actually got a stainless steel plate at the bottom which is kind of nice like i said at the beginning of this episode one of the reasons why i wanted to have you on is to mm-hmm. use you later on because i've gotten a lot of feedback from people who have said they really okay. liked the episode with chris miles from fresno california sure. because it was more technical and most of these okay. these calls have with people Interesting. Everybody has fun stories and and it's good, but a lot of people have said, I want to hear more technical stuff. You're Mm -hmm. super outgoing and friendly. While you're still a new owner, you've done a lot of stuff already. You know cars. So what I want to do in the hopefully near future is start doing some shorter, different episodes, shorter episodes that are, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes long. And I'm hoping to get Uh you and Chris Miles on a call together because you both have different cool. experience. He's been around a long time. He knows a lot of little tw- tricks and, and tips. And you know you're a mechanic. You know cars and you know how to do things. Not that right. not that there aren't other people out there that are super experts on DeLorean. But between you and Chris, I'm friendly with both of you. And you guys seem to have some time. So I think it would be fun to have you and Chris join me on calls to do short, short uh, interviews, short discussions that are highly technical about what to do on the car. Obviously, video works better for a lot of things, but most people don't have their DeLoreans torn apart. Most people don't have shops with extra DeLoreans sitting around. Uh, And I think that what you just described just now, boxing in the control arm, there's somebody out there that's gonna hear that and say, oh, that's a good idea. Maybe I should do it too. So I'm I'm looking forward to having, having you do some more of these little short episodes with me to talk about some of the technical things that you either have done or that you want to do. And between you and Chris, I think, I think there's lots of potential there. Yeah. Oh, that would be great. I would, I would love to do something like that. You know, I've talked with Chris quite a bit because I met him at DCS as well. And, and he is a wealth of knowledge. He's got a lot of good information and, and everything. And um, I, I enjoy having conversations with him about a lot of this stuff as well um so that would be that would be a lot of fun good good that's a great modification right there boxing in the lower control arm any other significant modifications that you've done that aren't necessarily that you buy from somebody i've done a sway bar i I did the um i actually did the polyurethane bushings for the sway bar and i know everybody's views on those you should stick with the rubber and but the way I look at it is the, the one thing about the DeLorean that's very different compared to any other vehicle is the fact that the sway bar is actually the, the sway bar bolts up to it bolts up to the lower control arm and keeps the control arm from going forward and backward movement. OK, there's a lot of when you're braking and when you're taking off, you know, accelerating and all that, there's a lot more stress on that lower control arm. Well, polyurethane is great for stiffening up suspension. I thought, well, it, for the sway bar, the mounts that go up to the frame and then the mounts that go into lower lower control arm, those I thought, well, that's a good idea to make those more polyurethane rigid. because, yeah, it'll be a little bit more rigid. You get a little bit less movement out of those points. Then I don't have to uh, worry about maybe having suspension issues or, you know, bad braking or something like that. I just thought that those points would, would benefit from polyurethane bushings instead of rubber. You go on a, f- a forum and read, and everybody's like, stay away from polyurethane, and everybody's like, no, stay away from rubber. Everybody's got their opinions. Everybody yep. is opinionated. It's yep. like there's Ford people and there's Chevy people. Yep. You know, yep. you're not going to sway somebody. They're going to do what they want to do, but I look at things, I try to think about things in a logistical fashion, 
like, okay, I get that maybe the DeLorean frame is not as beefy as it could have been. So if you add heavy duty bushings here or there, then maybe you might risk bending part of the frame or something like that because well, if it you're, doesn't give like it's supposed to. Yeah, but maybe but, that's if you're jumping the car. Like if you're just driving <laughs> it the way you're supposed to, it's fairly unlikely you're going to do any major damage just because you have a more rigid anything, you know? Right. You shouldn't. But, you know, like you've heard about the trailing arm bolts, right? Oh, yeah. Um, well, that's a, how that's you're a, supposed to check them. That's a design flaw and a manufacturing flaw. That's not a well, – I mean – It is. But there's – everybody talks about these Toby tabs. Have you heard of those? Yep. They're like wicked high strength. Yep. Um, Airplane-grade bolts that are a million dollars and sure. all this crap. But well, the problem is then you're toasting the entire frame, not just that one piece. Exactly. That's yeah. that's what I'm saying. You put those bolts in, and now people are saying, well, you you know, <laughs> those are great bolts. They'll never bend, but now mm-hmm. you're going to have issues with your frame. So I get that. That's why I'm like, okay, well – the car was built with rubber bushings. There's nothing wrong with rubber bushings. Well, they didn't have poly. They didn't have part. polyurethane back then. No. So that no, they, they might have chosen poly now. A lot of new cars choose poly. Oh yeah, it lasts longer. It doesn't yeah. break down like rubber does. Right. I might actually. I wish I had a way to use a CAD to design a part because I would love to design an actual lower A arm for the DeLorean for more stability. You know, something that will still accept the stock shocks and spring setup, or well, doesn't I thought, do- didn't DPI Josh already do that? Not that I know of. I know he's got a stainless steel lower control arm that accepts that he's got his own uh, coilover type shocks that he sells that fit into a stock type one. I have not seen an actual A arm oh. lower. I mean, I mean, if there is one, I'd like to see it because I think that would be a wonderful upgrade for the suspension. Since you've had the car for since March of 2018, you put a lot of miles on it. Do you remember what the mileage was when you bought the car, and do you know what the current mileage is? Um, when I bought the car, it had just over 87,000 miles on it, Whew. and it currently has just over 93,000 miles on it. That's it? So all the, the Arizona yep. and the Chicago trip, wow, so that's the biggest number of miles there. Still, you got a car. Yeah. You got eighty-seven thousand miles on a DeLorean. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, I was. Um, well, see, I know a lot of people would probably run away from a car with that kind of miles on it because it's high mileage, you know. But I, I not for the DeLorean. Kind of went back. And, well, no, I mean a nineteen eighty-one vehicle, regardless of what it is, eighty-seven thousand miles is still a low mileage. Right. But I, I also look at it this way: the car didn't sit. The guy actually drove it. it, it you know, I mean, I looked at a twenty thousand mile car. Um, there was one I fell in love with at one of the dealerships, and I really wanted it, but it was twice the price that I paid for this one. And things I already wanted to change on that one, you know, the, yeah. the suspension and stuff like that. So I said, you know, this one's been driven. The, the guy, you know, he told me he drives it as often as he could just to keep it going. And he was a car guy. Um, so it didn't scare me because I wanted to know that I could get in the car and drive it and I wouldn't feel bad putting miles on the car because yeah. I'm like, it's, it's, it's already quote unquote high mileage. <laughs> so what's another 30 or 40,000 miles, you know? Sure. So I've mentioned that on previous episodes that early on I, I thought, Oh, do I want to try to keep this pristine and low mileage? Cause mine only had 16 when I bought it which was great, but I spent a bunch of money getting refurbed. And then I said, no, I'm just going to enjoy it. And (laughs) while I don't, again, I don't think I have the guts to do a cross country road trip unless I had you in the car or Chris miles in the car, or (laughs) if I was driving to directly to DMC, Texas or some, some place that I knew could fix it. Um, I've driven in Northern California, but that's a pretty easy drive. There's lots of flatbed tow places and not a big deal, but any place else, I don't know if I have the guts for it. We'll see one of these days. <laughs> have you gotten a quote unquote best piece of DeLorean advice yet? Anything come to mind of some great wisdom that someone told you either years ago when you first got, got the first DeLorean or in recent months? Um, and if you don't have an answer, that's fine. I, you know, I, I can't say I've, I, I can't say I have an answer because there's a lot of good pieces of advice on this car. Things that, again, typical cars, you know, a front engine car, 
the cooling system, for instance, you know, this is a big, big thing that a lot of people may not understand if you've never owned one before, you know, with the, the fact that you can get air trapped in the cooling system if you have to open it up for anything. And that there's two points that you have to bleed to get air out. And if you get air in there, you basically, you know, it, the system gets locked and, you, you know, coolant's not flowing where it needs to flow. And you can overheat the motor, which is an all aluminum block, and you can have a lot of issues with that. That's a something that, you know, you really need to know. Um, and that I learned that actually with my first car, unknown to me about that. I was driving my car home back in 2001 when I had the, the 83 DeLorean. And I was cruising along, just jamming out the tunes. And I happened to look in the rear view mirror, and all I see was steam <laughs> pouring out the back. And I was like, oh, no. I shut the car off, threw it in neutral, and I happened to be right at the top of a very tall hill. And I threw it in neutral, and I just coasted down the hill to try to get, let any air that could you know, go yeah. over the motor to cool it down until it ran out of momentum. And then I just pulled it off to the side of the road, and I just sat there and waited until everything was cooled off because I had no idea what was going on. You know, again, that was a very, very new owner. And I, I didn't know if I just blew the motor up or what was going on. The, I didn't know that the system had to be bled um, with, you know, the air gets in the system. There apparently had been air trapped in the coolant system. And we ended up bleeding the system through the thermostat. Now, back then, I did not know that you had to bleed the radiator into things. Oh. Um, but we did get a bunch of air out of the thermostat. And once we did that, the car ran great, didn't have any more problems with it. But it was just, a, it was a, like, you know, your heart drops and you're like, oh, <laughs> no, what just happened? Yep. You know, because I don't want to put a motor in this car, you know. <laughs> <laughs> after you bled it, you didn't have any problems. No, no, it was it was a great running car after that. I mean, not that it was bad before, but I never had that issue again. Yeah, I, and I had the exact same thing. One time in the two and a half, two and three quarters years that I've had the car, I overheated at the mm -hmm. end of the Christmas parade. Uh, enough that oh, no. I got all the steam. I left it, you know, I pulled into a parking lot and just let it sit there. And we actually went and walked and got something to eat and then stopped. And I stopped at the auto parts store along on the walk back, bought it a bottle of 50, 50 mm -hmm. came back, filled it up. Never had a problem since uh, I, I, of course I babied it home and then I was paranoid and Danny at DMC is like, Oh, you probably had air trapped in there. And I was like, how? He says, well, sometimes you have leaks, but they had just gone over the car, so there was no leaks. It just – something had happened. It must have been when I checked it or whatever that it got mm -hmm. air, air bubble in there, and it caused it to, to heat up and then, wow. and then over overflow. Wow. That's that's just great, though. You didn't have any you know any damage done. Yeah. You know, that's that's yeah. always the plus. So, I yep. mean, it can, it can happen. Yeah. And the funny, funny thing is with the, the car I now have – on the way back from Arizona, I noticed that the, the coolant, you know, the, the temperature gauge didn't get much over the very first hash mark. It was sitting just above it the whole way back. And I didn't even use the air conditioning because the air conditioning wasn't blowing very cold. So we used uh -huh. the little the little toll booth windows, had those open for most of the trip because it was cooler out. And um, I said, man, this car is cooling great. It's not overheating. And I even called the, the owner, you know, the previous <laughs> owner said, I just want to make sure is that where it normally rides. He goes, yeah, it, does, it doesn't heat up very, you know, it doesn't get up. Really hot, my, and I was like, okay. Mine is exactly the same way, just over that first white mark, and it just it's pegged there. Yeah. Now and I was like, wow, this is great. I but when I found out when I got home, well, when I finally got the car home, I realized that when I turned the ignition on with the air conditioning and everything off, the fans were running all the time, <laughs> and I was like, wait a minute, okay, so that's normal. Um, no. It's not <laughs> really uh, the, the cooling fan. The cooling fans shouldn't run with with the air conditioning off. Uh, they should only run when the Otterstat, you know, reaches it's, its temperature to, to yeah. complete the circuit. So this was stone cold. Oh, it did that all the time. Stone cold. The fans oh, came on, and I thought, "I'm okay. sorry. I thought you said I thought you meant when you parked the car and you turn it off, the fans were still running. So." When you first turn the key on before you start the car, mm -hmm. the fans would come on automatically. Right. They, ah. they just kick on and start cycling on. I was like, mm, I don't think it's supposed to do that. Did the first so, owner bypass and have the fans on all the time? No, actually, the Otterstat was bad. 
Um, ah. So when I unplugged one of the wires off the outer stat, the fan shut off. I plug it back in, the fans would come on. So the I ended up buying a new outer stat, and when I replaced it, it was just corroded so bad. I don't ah. I don't know if it's gotten you know how old it was, but it was it was bad. <laughs> so I replaced it, and it, the fans have worked normal ever since. Now it'll go a little bit over that first white line now, but it's still it still stays way it's down solid. in the cooler yeah. side of things. Yeah, you know, so. again, uh, Toby at DeLorean Parts Northwest sells an adjustable outer stat. So you can yes. you can choose where you want the fans to come on, what temperature it comes on at. Yep. Well, I've also done a lot of uh, Dave's uh, relays, the uh, fan yeah. fail, and the, and I love his, his products, the RPM relay. Yep. Highly recommend those those relays to anybody that's got fan issues or anything like that because his uh, fan fail relay, which I think is really cool, actually restores the fan fail light to function so if you do have a fan <laughs> problem it will blink and let you know right um so yeah that, that's a wonderful thing yeah his he's got great stuff he he doesn't he's clearly an electrical engineer he's not a computer guy because mm-hmm. he just doesn't promote and he's on boy he's on dmc talk a lot he knows he he yeah. gives a lot of great answers on dmc talk yes he does he's, he's very knowledgeable yeah. yeah you know you had mentioned something else to me i i uh, Earlier you said that you had replaced the springs, and I saw that on DeLoreanMarketplace.com you had listed your old springs for sale. Yeah. And I, I also saw that you you posted on the Wanted to Buy section a, mm-hmm. a, a tire, a luggage rack. I am, yeah, I, I'm looking for one. So looking for a luggage rack uh, because what I want to do is I'd like to be able to get one and take some measurements of it, and I'd like to try to make one out of all stainless is the thought process. It's just in the in the thought process right now until I can find one. Part of this comes Go from ahead. the fact that your dad is a fabricator. He does a lot of welding yeah. and cutting, and he has lots of metal, and you grew up around that. So this is not – it's not me saying I want to fabricate a, a new DeLorean – luggage rack this is coming from somebody who has some experience and knowledge and that's kind of where this is right exactly yeah we wanted to build it out of stainless and tig weld it all together and 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 make it very similar to the original but make it a little bit more modernized and try to figure out some a different way to attach it so you're not seeing the clamps even though the clamps fold down underneath the louvers we're thinking maybe there's a different way we can attach it where you don't have to drill anything into the car because you do actually have to mount those four clamps on the on the car and i cringe at having the drill holes in my car but (laughs) you know there's got to be another way technology's changed over the last 38 years and stuff like that there's there's, i'm sure there's something so it's something that yeah i'm I'm looking for one i don't want to spend an an arm and a leg on one, but I would like to try to find one for research purposes, at the very least, um, just so we can get some measurements and, and all that stuff. And I'm sure if you do have to buy one, it'll be very easy to sell it if you do find one, because I passed on one a couple of years ago that was 100 bucks in Vegas, and mm-hmm. I'm still kicking myself. I wish I would have bought it. With or without now, the that- mounting hardware, I, it doesn't matter. I, I yeah. I, wish I was gonna I ask you, did it have the mounting hardware? Yeah, I don't. Now I don't remember. I don't. It, that was like I said oh. about two years ago. But I talked to a couple of people, <laughs> and they said you're never gonna use it. Don't. There's no reason to get it. And and I was like, oh, okay, great. Because what do I know? But now it's been a couple of years, and I wish I had it, not for spare tire, but literally for luggage. I'm driving the Delorean to Vegas mm-hmm. in a couple of weeks for Delorean weekend, Las Vegas, and right. I don't actually need the extra. But if somebody was gonna be riding in the car with me. Yeah, it would be nice to be able to throw it, you know, throw another bag up there and tighten it down. Sure. It's a three and a half hour drive. This is not super long, but uh, that way I don't have to play Tetris with all of my luggage. You know, I could be lazy, right. throw stuff into the big bag, and then just tie it to the back. So one of these, right? That's oh. why if you if you guys do end up building building these, I'm definitely interested. If the price point is right, I could see wanting to get it because the. The original luggage racks are really hard to come by, and when you do find them, they're expensive. I'm not willing to give DMC 350 bucks for one, for something right. that I'm not going to yeah, use very often. And that's what I've heard. And um, you know, I mean, I, I, the the thing is, is you know, the, they're brand new, original. I get that. You know, that's awesome. And 
collectability wise, I, I can understand, you know, having one, but if you take it out of the box, then you're, and you're going to use it, then it's not really all that original <laughs> anymore. It's, it's to me, it'd be more collectible to leave it in the box, but then you can't sure. use it. Right. So, right. Even if you hung it on the wall, but otherwise <laughs> why have it? If you're not going to, if you don't want to use it for those short trips. Right. Right. And I mean, yeah, it's probably not something you're going to use all the time, but when you do need it, it'd be nice to just have it somewhere, you know, whether it be in your trunk, because I guess the original ones that were designed to fit in your trunk, so you had it when you needed it. Right. Um, but regardless, it'd be just nice to know I, I've got the option if I needed it. Yep. Um, and like I said, I want to I want to do them out of stainless steel to match the car, and then you know you could always have it powder coated black if you just wanted to have it black. And that's what to I would blend want. Blend in with louvers. Yeah, I would yeah. want a black that, one. That wouldn't cost much to in today's oh, yeah. day and age to have it powder coated. I mean. Nope. And it's but, a small amount of metal. You're not talking about half a car. You're talking about yeah, a small amount. So right. very cool. Well, I hope that I hope to hear more about that in the future. I hope you get to get that project together because I'd like me to too. see that. Me too. No, it's it's definitely uh, in the uh, in the work stages. It's just a matter of um, getting some uh, measurements and and get get started on it. So yeah, take um, a look on but, on DeLoreanDirector dot com. There's an article about mm -hmm. Jeffrey Dragota from, I think he's from Paris, France. And he took, him and another owner took their car, their DeLoreans camping. And they built, a, I'll call it a crude, no offense to them, it's a, it's a bit crude, not nice looking, but it worked great. And they were doing car camping. They had a lot of stuff in the DeLorean. So, oh, wow. and he's got a bunch of pictures. So you might take a look at there and see if the, any of those pictures at least are inspirational. Okay, I'll have to check that out. I'll tell you what, on the trip back from Arizona, the car was fully loaded. I mean, there was not a <laughs> spot that we could have put anything else. The trunk, because the previous owner, I mean, he had parts and memorabilia. I got books and documents and paperwork, like galore, from when the car was brand new. I got every receipt for the car. Um, I actually have two three-ring binders full of stuff that I, I've gone through, and I've reorganized it by year, month, wow. date. Wow. So everything is in complete order from when it was brand new till till now. Um, he gave me a, a huge stack of DeLorean World magazines. I mean, uh, a bunch of different DeLorean books. I just, he had the trunk full, and then I had, the, my stuff could only fit in the parcel shelf behind the <laughs> passenger driver's seat, and that was, I could barely see out the back window. As, <laughs> as small as that is, that tells you how much was back there. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was it was quite a trip. There was not much room for anything else. And but I could see again, going back to the rack. That that would have been nice if if we had had one of those. I could have yeah. had a little extra room for some stuff. But. So jealous of you guys. I just met another new owner last night. Who or actually uh -huh. he he's had his car for two or three months. Same thing. He said he got so much paperwork memorabilia and stuff with his car i'm like man i got nothing like literally nothing there the oh well i got the an original car cover that was in that the car had been covered with for 27 years that was it uh -huh. there was nothing else in the car they didn't give me anything was it was it in good shape the car cover yeah sorry when i say original it was not a dmc car cover but you can tell that it was 20 25 oh, okay. years old so yeah not a dmc car cover it didn't have the bag just a DeLorean on the side? No, no. I, I'm uh, I'm I, fairly sure this is not a DMC car cover. It could be, maybe. Well, I tell you what, I got one with my car, um, and it had the bag. So I was going through all the stuff before I left there, and he had, he goes, here's the original car cover. I'm like, oh, okay. And it was up in the trunk all folded up. And, <clears throat> I, you know, the little cubby hole behind the driver's seat, uh -huh. he had stuff in there, too. I'm going through that, and well, there's this bag, and it says DeLorean on the side. And I'm looking at the bag going, well, that's neat. I wonder what came in that bag. And then I went and I looked at the car cover again. I'm like, wait, these are the same color. I bet you that goes in there. And sure enough, that's the bag for the car cover. I'm like, wow, that's cool. And that's I tried awesome. it when I got home, and it fits the car perfect. I was like, well, that's neat. <laughs> well, I'm jealous of you guys. I've had to build my own collection of stuff over the years. <laughs> well, there's nothing wrong with it. Did you at least get the window sticker with your car? Uh, the, the quality check window sticker. Oh no. You mean that the purchase sticker? No, no, L literally nothing. In fact, this is one of the things that kills me. I was, I was so excited about having the car that when I went, well, that when I went to DMV to register it in my name, unfortunately I took the original 
paperwork, the original license, you know, title for the car. Mm -hmm. And DMC, DMV forced me to turn it over to them. And, oh. and I was like, oh, no, I want to keep this. They're like, you can't. I'm like, are you kidding me? So I, I don't even have the original title because DMV took it. Very, such oh, a bummer. Man. Yeah, and then I found yeah. out, I said, I said, well, could I just give you a photocopy? And they're like, no, just give us this one. And I was excited, and I didn't quite, I was brand new. So now I look back, and I tell people, like, if you get a chance, do not take the original in. Just take them a copy of it and say the original got lost. They have all of it in their computer. Hmm. They don't need the original piece of paper. So, anyway. Uh, okay. Yeah, so well, I got but... nothing. Well, well anyway, boo-hoo. <laughs> other than the DeLorean, what is your daily driver? Yeah. What what kind of car do you drive <laughs> other than the DeLorean? Okay, well, my daily driver um, would be uh, a 06 Saturn View um, SUV. Um, and then I also have a 94 Chevy van, uh, the old the, the old body style, you know, like the A-Team van body style van. I have oh, one of those awesome. as well. Awesome, awesome. Just yep. always curious yep. what people drive other than DeLorean. I've got a Jetta, and that's not terribly exciting, but some people are driving more oh. exciting cars. <laughs> other than well, the DeLorean, what's your what's your other dream car? Well, that's you know that that's a, a tough one. I, I I've loved there. I love a lot of other cars. It would have to be like a a '66 GTO or a '77 Transit. I like Pontiacs. You know, and I don't know if that has anything to do that John DeLorean also designed the GTO, <laughs> yeah. but I, I just, and I think it's actually an influence from my dad because I you know he likes Pontiacs a lot. And I just, I like a lot of the body lines and stuff on, on some of the Pontiacs. So yeah, I, I like the old GTOs a lot and the Trans Ams. i probably have to someday add one of those to the stable, but. Cool. All right. Well, before I let you go, last question. Sure. I ask a lot of people and you've probably heard me ask other people. What is currently in the trunk of your DeLorean? Well, currently in the trunk of my DeLorean is a fold-up camping type chair for going to car shows. I've got that, Smart. and then that's about it. I got the spare tire, um, and the jack, and all those tools yeah. up in the front right. apron. But actually, actually in the trunk is just that chair. Wow, <laughs> you're good. I, I I don't like a lot of clutter. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, Ryan, thanks again for joining. I'm excited to do some more mini episodes with you talking technical things on the on the DeLorean and appreciate you taking the time. Dave, thank you for having me. I enjoy your show. I hope to hear many more episodes coming up here in the near future as well. I'm working on it. All right. Well, <laughs> everybody out there, again, thanks as always. Don't forget to check out DeLorean Talk on all social media. Check out DeLoreanTalk.com. Be sure to check out DeLoreanDirectory.com. Lots of articles. There's a big collection of anytime news or media writes something about the DeLorean, it gets added to the list. There's the DeLorean Census. It's growing and growing and growing. Lots of great information there, lots of photos. If you submit your VIN, then be sure to send over a bunch of pictures, however many pictures you want to share, and uh, just lots of great information. So check it out and... Also, uh, check out DeLoreanMarketplace.com if you're looking to buy or sell DeLorean-related stuff. Thanks again, and drive safe. <laughs>